I want to start by saying something to the church. This is the reality that I know. This is the one I was raised in. This is my family. And if I've never told you, the people who don't look like me, that I'm deeply sorry for people who do look like me and the things they've done or said or implied or pushed you back or pushed you down. I'm sorry. It's not the way God intended. It's not his plan. Nor does it have to be our future. Amen. But if you haven't heard somebody like me that looks like me tell you that we're sorry, hear it. No strings attached. Just sorry. This is my this is my guitar. When I stopped crying, I could talk. <laughs> crying for three days. I think you run out eventually, but you don't. Thank you, friend. You guys see this guitar on a regular basis, don't you? <clears throat> and for all intents and purposes, here it is. It's just a guitar. It's, you know me well, it's not a guitar, it's my tailor. It's a bit more than a guitar to me. It plays music, and that's a story. But you just see that. What a lot of people don't see is that right next to this big sound hole is a bullet hole. It's an old guitar. It's an old guitar that has a story behind it. it has a story of violence behind it. Somebody bought this guitar and was very upset with that. And a spouse decided to shoot the guitar. So I have the case, and the bullet goes from one side of the case to the guitar, to the back of the guitar, and out the other side of the case. And this guitar ended up in a vintage guitar shop. And um, I'd come in and I'd eyeball this guitar, and the only thing I knew about the guitar was that it said Taylor on the top of the neck. And I knew I, I'm not, I'm never going to be in a position to own a Taylor guitar. Rich people own Taylor guitars. And I said, may I play the guitar? Can I see the guitar? And the guy began to talk me out of it. Saying, you don't want this guitar. This guitar has a bullet hole in it. This guitar is an older guitar. It's not a guitar you want. And something started to shift inside of me. I said, no, no, no. I want to see the guitar. And I held the guitar. And I learned the instrument. Not contingent upon the bullet hole. But on the instrument. But there's an interesting fact that you guys just experienced here in this room. Many of you guys just saw the guitar, but now you see there's a bullet hole. There's been a shift in your thinking that all of a sudden now there's a bullet hole. There's always been a bullet hole in this guitar, at least for the last 20 years of its life, of its 30. But we didn't see it. Friends, what's going on in the media? We're seeing stuff that has been going on Amen. 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 for a long time. And we all didn't get that message at the same time. God allowed other people to see into that first. I don't know why, but I do know this, that when we become, when stuff becomes visible to us, the Holy Spirit makes us responsible to respond. Yes. We are responsible to do something. Amen. And for all of you out there who have been doing it alone, I'm sorry you've done it alone. Can we come beside you? <laughs> thank you for taking on the journey. And thank you for running it alone for so long. I'll get there eventually. <laughs> Social media has been making me want to uh, destroy my Apple products. But I haven't turned it off. 
because I want to see what's going on in the climate. I've hidden a few people. Because I've been either that or say something mean. One of the things I, that, that raised up in me is this insatiable desire in our community that when bad things happen to some people, we want to put it all in one big category and make it everybody's issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We do something, we do it by saying things like all lives matter. Because we're scared to say black lives matter. And we're even more scared to say it as white people. Friends, those days are done. Amen. Because, and this is, this is what happened. I was sitting at a conference this week. This week I was in a conference and I was actually texting with Akia. And I was a mess and I was talking to people and I was crying. It was bad. It was ugly. Jesus was doing something in my heart. But he had me open up to the book of Luke. And in the book of Luke, chapter 4. That's Zachariah. That's not it. Jesus is, really, you're just kind of getting a background of what's going on, and uh, John the Baptist is there, and Jesus is told Mary's song, and you know, he goes through and read the titles and all that kind of stuff, and then Jesus was born, and then he's at the temple, and he moves on, and moves on, there we go, and then Jesus says, um, keep on cruising, keep on cruising, keep on cruising, where are we at here? Um, my notes here. Luke chapter 4, verse 14. So what's happening is, um, there we go, there we go, there we go. Jesus goes to the wilderness and he's wrestling with the devil. So he's really at the kind of the beginning part of his ministry happening out here. And then he ends up at the temple. The temple to which he's always gone to. And this, he, he's a Jew. He's, he's, his climate, he's in this climate that he knows well. And they ask him to read the scroll. And he reads the scroll. It says this. The devil does not want me to read this. It's on your screen. It's on the screen. Thank you. There we go. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power. It's on my paper too. In the power of the Spirit. And the news had spread about him. Okay, moving on, moving on. 17. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. And he unrolled it. And he found, he found the place, it says, where it's written. The Spirit of the Lord has come to me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to prisoners. And to recover sight for the blind. And to set the oppressed free. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. We can go on with this, but I just want to stop for a second. Jesus did not come in and say, I've come to bring salvation to everybody. He started off by saying, there is significant need here. And there is significant need here. And there is significant need here. And we need to focus on that because I'm bringing freedom to that. And it rocked me. It leveled me. It leveled me in a way of saying, we need to be specific people. To say these are specific issues going on in our specific culture. And say Jesus can talk about this and he can fix it. Amen. But we have to let him do that. Yes. We have to get ourselves out of the way. To say yes, fix it. Because you keep reading through the word of God. It says this, it says, don't kill doesn't say there's justified killing or not justified killing. It doesn't say that you have a badge you can kill. It doesn't say any of this stuff. It says, do not kill. Amen. It's what the Bible says. It says that we're not supposed to be coordinating people's times of judgment. But loving them and drawing them into the peace and power of Jesus. Yes. That the Holy Spirit is moving in their life. My challenge for us today is that we would become people who can see these highlighted issues and step into it. Not run from it, but just step into it. Amen. Amen. Step into it in a way of saying, I don't know what the answer is, but I know Jesus is here and I know that he's equipping me to do this one day at a time. That old southern song, one day at a time, sweet Jesus. He says, it's all you're asking. Of me. But he's asking us to do something. He's not asking us to sit around and help other people figure it out. But how can we be an infusing, healing presence in the middle of turmoil? And friends, I would suggest sitting in a culture the way we sit in 
a family of God that we sit in that is vastly different than about 99% of all the other churches that are gathering this moment right now strategically placed to bring forth change yes. and to bring forth healing and it will be bumpy and I don't know how to do it. But I think we can hear the voice of the Spirit and begin to be people who advocate appropriately for justice yes. and advocate appropriately that it is inappropriate Advocate appropriately that it's inappropriate for people to be judged by what they look like rather than what they can bring to the table and what God's doing in their life. Yes, Amen. We have to knock it off as a, as a community. Yes, we have to knock it off. And I believe that the Lord is standing at the edge of the door saying, listen into me. Listen. These things are going to keep coming real. That there's going to be wars and rumors of wars and violence. And he's saying, I'm telling you now. It's not time to run and hide. Amen. But to get into the middle of it. That's right. And say this radical presence of God that's in my life is not just for me. Yes. But for all around me. I feel like we should begin to start to ask ourselves questions. Questions that will make us uncomfortable. That when we hear things in social media. And when we hear that Eric Garner dead. I have a whole list here. Pray through. Freddie Gray is dead. Tamara Rice is dead. That we're so quick to figure out who was at fault. Rather than just be horrified that death has happened. Yeah. Amen. And feel the sorrow of death and pain and hurt. And we're so consumed about other things, but now families have been shattered. Yes. Amen. They're just shattered. Their whole reality is different. The facts that led up to that at that point are moot. Yes. Let us become a place. That sees pain and knows that we have a doctor who can cure it. Yeah. Yes. Let us be a place that sees sorrow and knows that he can turn that into dancing. Yes. Yes. Let us be that place. But I think we have to let us be that place. There has to be a vulnerability that sets into our hearts. That we may say the wrong thing, or we may bump into something, or we may, but we are a family of God that sees it bigger than this and knows that redemption can happen. Praise God. Yes. And we pray for it. So as we go into worship, I'm, I'm not even going to talk much more. I want to keep worshiping. But I want to worship in this way. Could we be just pleading God in your own heart? For people to experience redemption, not based on all the facts, but based on the fact that we as created people are broken. Praise We're God. busted up from Jump Street. Yes, Lord. Every one of us. Yes. And it doesn't matter what was done or not done. We're still going to hell without Jesus. Yes. Amen. Yes, Lord. I'm no better than Freddie Gray. I'm no better than these guys. I'm no better. We must proclaim the name of Jesus and bring yeah. freedom to the captive. Community service, community activism, community development is something that we've, we've, we've sensed that the Spirit of God is brewing amongst us. Yes. We've strategically placed people coming into our lives. Church, be praying into that. Be praying into ways that we can be getting into neighborhoods, into homes, into relationships, Amen. into relationships, and walk the journey out together. Amen. This isn't a product we just turn people loose and that. We walk this out until we, until we meet them. We're walking with our family. But let's grow the family. Let's grow the influence. Some of us need to repent of feelings that we've had in our hearts. 
Some of us need to repent daily. Lord, change the way I judge people for no reason. Yes. Whatsoever. Yes. Other than my sin-laden fear. Because it's fear. Yeah. And he brings freedom to fear. Yeah. So if we give fear a foothold, we're not fully embracing him. You have a burning prayer in your heart that you want to pray out in this next time of worship. You come down, we'll give you a mic. But I want to give some ground rules to it. This is a prayer of redemption, a prayer of healing, a prayer of advocacy. It's not a prayer of judgment. It's not a prayer of, Lord, if you do this, we'll do that. Or this person had it coming to him because this happened. And Lord, not, none of that. None of that. Jesus brings peace Amen. to the storm. He takes the areas that we say are so incredibly turned over that there's no option. And he just goes, shh, quiet. And the waves calm down. If you leave here with, you leave with two things today. We're going to keep working. We have 15 minutes and we're just going to use it up. Okay? Jesus loves you just the way you are. There's not a thing wrong with you. He wants to take that and he wants to turn it more into what he is. There's nothing in you that's going, mm, no. He's saying, I want that. Give that to me. There's nothing you can hold on to that he doesn't want. He wants it all. So know that he loves you very, very much. I know that this dysfunctional, weird-looking family that we have loves you very much. And we are less of a family if we don't look the way we look. But somehow God's allowing us to have a touch into the kingdom of God where we get to gather from every nation and tribe and tongue and color and background. And we don't do it in any form of show, but it's an authentic spot for us. We just pray that we don't hold it on our own. God lets that move out to the neighborhoods and communities. So know that you're loved very much by Jesus. And know that you're loved very much by us. So let's stand and worship or sit and worship or kneel and worship. But if you get a prayer that's burning in you that you really feel is a voice of the Lord, come forward and I'll come talk to you and we will pray that out. Feel it.